When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, Colleen Biggs, and today we got a groovy chick. We got a groovy chick with us. And you know, every week I'm bringing the best forward. And the the thing I love about doing a podcast and have done a radio show for so many years really is because I, I get to provide opportunities for other women and some token men that I absolutely think are fantastic. And I bring them in and interview them. I get to bring them onto the show and spotlight how freaking awesome they are. I get to spotlight the amazing things that they're doing. Uh, They talk about their struggles. They tell you nuggets of what you can do to apply to your life so you can design it the way you want to have it done. And the groovy chick I have with me today, that's her email, by the way, is (laughs) Pam Wilson, a.k.a. Carrie Bradshaw. She was the Carrie Bradshaw before Carrie Bradshaw became Carrie Bradshaw in Sex in the City. So we've got <laughs> some really, really, really fun stuff to talk about today. Uh, and I want to say hello to all of our Leap members out there. Uh, you know, we're going live today in our Facebook group. The Leap community, uh, which Pam is a member of, is a community for business builders. So if you're a female small business owner and you're building your business, this community offers you not only the spotlights for you to get the visibility and the promotion, it's also going to offer you the collaboration, the networking, the masterminding, the you know, the education every week at a Thrive Thursday Masterclass. So you get a lot of opportunities here in this community for such a small price of only $47 a month. So I wanted to uh, thank all of the members of the community for giving so much and elevating and empowering the other women within the community. So ladies, you rock. Thank you so much for everything that you offer uh, the ladies in the community. And I want to um, thank our sponsor of today's show, which is Peaceful Living. Uh, Why do we allow stress to compound in our lives, affecting our sleep and our daily rituals? The truth is we all live with stress, but imagine what it would be like to not suffer from stress. Ooh, that kind of makes you think, right? Are you ready to feel better, sleep better, and change your overall relationship with tension? Peaceful living can help you bring more peaceful moments into your day. Peaceful living offers simple tools, live streams, and on-demand classes, and a customized self-care success plan. Imagine if you had a simple way to slow down and restore your energy without taking big chunks of time away from your schedule. We know it's possible, and we're here here to help. And the founder, Roberta Hughes, will be your guide each step of the way. So visit Peaceful Living at uh, the link that we have below for you to begin your journey with a free membership. If you use the code LEAP, you receive your first month for free. I love that. And I take her classes online. I love my favorite was the Pilates challenge she did not too long ago. And I got my husband involved in it, too. I grabbed my laptop. I took it into our bedroom and we did Pilates every morning. So he didn't had never done Pilates. It was it was a whole lot of fun. Um, All right. So let's talk about Miss a.k.a. Carrie Bradshaw. Pam Wilson's here. She's a writer, a licensed master social worker, a whole brain practitioner, a creative writing facilitator, and she's a book coach. I actually met Pam many, many, many years ago when I just came out of corporate America and started my business back in 2019. I was so green. So I'll have to ask her the question if she can tell the difference between when she first met me and who I am today. And hopefully I'm the exact same person, but we'll see what she says. She's a writer mentor and Pam empowers people to find and use their voice for storytelling and writing. She writes a personal narrative about life events, putting her unique spin and the journey of being human the funny, frustrating, and inspiring. Pam also travels, writes, and interviews people for StoryCorps interviews. She's certified as a whole-bearing practitioner. How many of you are using your whole brain? 
I'm going to say right now, I don't think y'all. So we're going to talk about that. She works collaboratively within organizations to enhance the experience of every team member. She's committed to creativity and passion to connect and inspire. Her perspective offers clarity and vision from ideas to action. Pam, you're freaking awesome. We love you. Welcome to the podcast today. Thank you. I was just listening to that thinking, wow, like I should be impressed too. (laughs) You know, you started when I first heard the story of how you started a long time ago, I was like, what's up, Carrie Bradshaw? You never told me that. So (laughs) let's just share because everyone's like, what'd she do? Why do you keep calling her Carrie Bradshaw? What's this life? It's Carrie Bradshaw with, you know, a white picket fence and kids. Maybe I should just say that. So, <laughs> Pam, what was that? What was that like? Where did that opportunity come from? So tell, so help us, you know, you're a storyteller. Tell the story of, of what that life was like before that opportunity came along. So I have been writing my whole life. I have been a storyteller my entire life. I don't remember a time that I wasn't writing stories and telling people stories. And I live in Missouri and I went to Mizzou, which has a a great journalism school and did not get in because I flunked Spanish. And so I have a different degree and I came out using that degree. I'm still writing stories all the time. And then I have a master's in social work from Wash U. And then um, I had kids and I was staying home with kids and I got injured. And somebody said, what have you always wanted to do? And I said, well, I've always wanted to write stories. And I had this great idea. I was going to write about life, even in college. That's why I decided to go to school. Um, And I was going to live in Chicago, New York and write about life. And I started writing about raising kids in suburbia here in Chesterfield, Missouri. The first two articles were the chocolate chip cookie garden. And I believe it was the princess game. And I wrote these articles and a friend of mine, Jenny, who is still an amazing friend. She's amazing. She was right. She was a camp counsel and she was writing this article for this magazine called Savvy Family. And she said, why don't you send your stuff in? So I sent an email. This was 21 years ago. And I did the thing that you're never supposed to do. I called when I didn't hear from them. And the editor, a young editor said, oh my gosh, we love your stuff. We love that what you're talking about because no one else is talking about this. And she's like, I'd like you to have a monthly column. And my in my mind, it had always been SOS from suburbia, which meant a lot of different things. So I continued to write every single month. My kids were about three and seven when I started. And the unique part about it was, it was from my perspective. I only threw myself under the bus. Nobody, everybody else was a shining star. I mean, you know, I wrote about my daughter auditioning for the Muni Opera. I wrote about when we taught my son to drive. I wrote about um, anything and everything you can think of, the double barrel bet, everything you can think about. And eventually it got picked up from Savvy Family into um, a local paper. And then, which was owned by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And the St. Louis Post-Dispatch started running it. So it was like local girl, home girl does amazing. Well, a friend of mine, Eric, thanks, Eric, he read it. And he's like, this is like sex in the city without the sex and without the city. (laughs) And it made perfect sense. And the great thing with my pic, my actual bio picture was in this magazine, in the newspaper. um, And people would say to me, I love what you're writing about. This is so amazing. This is so cool. How do you think of this stuff? And I said, well, look around your life and there are always always Mm. stories and there's always something somebody will relate to. And, you know, you mentioned white picket fences. Um, Everything was not like a hundred percent rosy. There were, we had struggles and challenges, Mm -hmm. but if you use humor and you use honesty and you have an amazing community supporting you, the stories just floated out. And I wrote, I wrote about raising kids for almost 14 years, which then um, I I actually published a book called SOS from Suburbia, which told a story in a story arc um, in um, about 40 different essays. And um, after that column ended, the editor, Janice, who's amazing, um, she taught me how to write features articles. So I kept writing parenting mm-hmm. articles for St. Louis Family Magazine here for anyone who would who would um, post them. And I still, to this day, write about my life. Um, and they're now personal narratives, that, which appears on my website. And it's still my perception of the world. And everything is, like Nora Ephron said, everything is copy for real. Mm-hmm. The other day, my neighbor did something amazing. And I thought, 
there's a story right there. Won't you be my neighbor? So every single thing to me is a story. I'm constantly observing and looking at things. Yeah. And it's always from my perspective, which means that everyone else has their own perspective, but they can relate to it. And we were talking before we went on, um, writing and storytelling actually feeds my soul. I think if I couldn't write and I didn't write, I would not feel the way I feel. So mm. I actually try and write every day, even if some of it's not publishable, um, I sit down and I write. And then, I mean, that just led to so many other opportunities about writing, mm -hmm. book coaching. I'm now doing story core interviews and writing, having written pieces. So I just, I find people very fascinating and everyone does have a story and the best stories are our stories. Us. Absolutely. Yeah, a, a they really more. are. I mean, it's why reality TV is so popular. People really <laughs> just want a glimpse Very true. of what's going on behind your life. You know, I really get to live in the everyday of my grandkids with my kids that kind of post stuff about them every day and what they're doing and the silly stuff, you know, uh, because I don't get to be in that all the time. Right. So we're working and we're not, you know, at their house all the time because we don't live with them. But you said something about and I want to go back to this and I'm not overshadowing what you said, but I just wanted to go back to the first thing you said, which was on our last episode. And our last episode was about marketing yourself. And you said, I picked up the phone when I didn't hear from them. So you know, in, the, in the journalism world and yeah. in the writing world, that is like the they that is the one thing they say the not taboo. To, interestingly <laughs> enough, I I had emailed her and she was a young editor. She probably was inundated with emails. And I was like, well, and I think this often, what do I have to lose? I haven't heard from her. Right. So I called. And I just, you know what? It was just the right thing to do. I didn't have mm -hmm. any, I didn't have any self-doubt um with writing. I, I always have believed in myself always. And it, and I believe that the stories out there are fascinating and interesting of everybody and the people that I talk with. And so I literally just picked up the phone and I have done that a couple of times in the past and people are always surprised. Well, you're really not supposed to call me. And I said, well, here, here I am calling you. Would you like to have a conversation? Um, and I would, you know what? Use your intuition. My intuition, mm -hmm. how many years ago is that? That was 21 years ago. My intuition was right. And it it led me in a completely different path or journey mm -hmm. that I might not have had. And so I am incredibly grateful for that young editor um, mm -hmm. who answered the phone. And in addition to marketing, something that you talk about a lot about is networking is that really appreciate the people who help you, who shake your hand, who answer the phone, who give you someone to talk to, because without that, my journey yeah. would be completely different. I totally agree. And I'm glad that you said that, Pam, because, you know, I think it's very important for us to remember that there's things in our lives that we love. There's stories happening around us all the time. There are stories within our business. There's stories within our everyday. And these are gold that you can utilize for content. You can utilize that for marketing yourselves on social media, right? I mean, yes. all of this is opportunities for us to utilize that. You don't have to make it up. You don't have to sit there and you know <laughs> make it up. It's like, what happened to you yesterday? Write about what your day was like yesterday mm -hmm. and call it a day in the life of a, you know, a female mm -hmm. entrepreneur and the day in the life of, you know, Pam Wilson or whatever you want to write. But people love reading those. They love reality TV. They love social media because it's a glimpse behind the front doors of what's happening you know, in your house, I, I always said the best content is they want to know what do you carry around in your purse? You know, like, <laughs> right. or what's in your yeah. refrigerator? Yeah. What, what is in your, I'm just going to be, I will tell you, oh, there's a drawer of chocolate in there. <laughs> you know, it, I, right. I never would have known that people oh, would look at my refrigerator and be like, this is boring. <laughs> This oh, is no, super a boring. drawer of chocolate. Someone looked at that yesterday and said, do you think you have a problem? I'm like, I know I have a problem with chocolate. <laughs> yes. Um, I also, I think writing about my family and raising kids taught me that everyone can relate to something that you write. So you're just talking about a day in the life. Um, every single person can relate to something yeah. in some way. I, I remember one time I wrote about, I can't, I, I wrote, I wrote about when my daughter was a teenager and she was a closet thief because she would come into my closet and she would take things without mine, telling me. 
Mine and then too. put them back without putting them in the laundry. And I thought that was the funniest thing. And I wrote about it and people were like, I didn't realize that was happening anywhere else. So everybody can relate to something. I have written also about chocolate and being a chocoholic and <laughs> the responses to that are very, very funny. Also, I find the humor in everything, even, mm-hmm. even in a situation where you maybe can't find humor. I can always find something. I can always find something humorous. And I hope that my writing reflects that. I want my writing to be light. And the best compliment I can get is when someone reads something and says, it just sounds like you're talking to us because you don't see the work and the hours that go into that so that the writing feels light and it feels relevant and it's interesting. And I always just smile and say, yeah, thank you. I love that. And you're... An amazing writer. So WilsonMentoringWriting.com is definitely where you're going to find a lot of her blogs. You can find her blogs on ColleenBiggs.net too. We have a lot of her blogs posted on our website for sure because she's just an amazing writer. Um, We should just get you to write like a regular column. Okay. How fun would that be? Actually, you know what would be interesting? You were just saying a day in the life of a women entrepreneur. I mean, I did just start a writing business a year and a half ago. I changed over this year. Mm-hmm. There's so much to write about. Um, and and I actually, Colleen, I get a lot of inspiration from you. I attend the Thursday, uh, Thrive Thursdays. Mm-hmm. I attend Business Mastermind. And I often um, get many ideas about writing from you to like translate into my life and how mm-hmm. I'm going to use it. Yeah. Um, and honestly, um, you, ha- you have so much content. Just everything, even before we went on just now, you were talking and I was like, that would be great content. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, because great. that's the way your I'm brain thinks. Notes. <laughs> yeah, but that's the way your brain thinks, right? So oh, yes. if someone is in the marketing, they're going to think of what you're saying or I'm saying from a marketing perspective. And so that's what makes us all unique. I think it's very important that we, you know, really settle into you have had a writing career for so long. I mean, decades, centuries. Mm-hmm. You've had a writing career that has gone. It really has it been a century, 25 years, right? When about 20, well, 21 published, yep. but I have, I mean, I have been writing, oh, yeah. I used to write in high school and give it to people, you know, when you would type it out and like yeah. copy it and give it to people. Um, I have, I, I do not remember a time that I was not a storyteller. That's beautiful. I don't. Yeah. 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 So where did whole brain health come in? Talk to us about that. Well, it was interesting. Um, as I uh, started, I continued to write the personal narratives and the travel blogs, which I <laughs> I realized that people want to hear about travel too, and not just go to this restaurant. Instead, my travel blogs are personal narrative travel blogs where I'll mm. say, and I ran the Rocky Steps, and here's a picture of me doing it. Um, I knew I wanted to do something with my social work background. Um, besides, I, I do have a facilitated writing group, which combines writing and social work. I wanted to do something else and you were instrumental in my decision-making and that I wanted to do something to put out into the world. And I know people who are in the whole brain world. So in February, I became a whole brain certified practitioner, Mm. which basically means whole brain is a way for us to recognize cognitive diversity Mm -hmm. um, in life and in business. And basically what I do is um, with the work with whole brain, um, we're using our whole brain. It's a framework for Mm -hmm. decision-making. And it also indicates our thinking preferences, not our skills or abilities. Um, And you're born with thinking preferences. Um, And so I can go and I can go into companies and I can talk about relationship building, team Mm -hmm. enhancement, leadership, decision-making, change, innovation. And what I like to do in all of my lunch and learns, which are complementary as well as the actual set, um, the actual workshops is I have a whole brain, uh, whole brain thinking, writing component. And everywhere I go, we will write about um, our experiences with whole brain theory, whole brain thinking, how it's how you see it, how it's impacting your life. The great thing about whole brain thinking is that it, it is it can impact us in so many different ways. Yeah, and, and that was part of my goal is that I wanted to write more about it because people, honestly, not a lot of people know about it, even though it's been around since the seventies. So, I, interestingly enough, I was talking to somebody the other day. And she does three different things. And she she's a little older than I am. And she's like, and I love them all. We were just talking about this too, is that I, ha- I for a while, was just concentrating on whole brain thinking and, and talking to different companies and people. I have, in the last couple of weeks, gone back to writing a lot more and interviewing for the StoryCorps app um, because 
I need, I need to be able to do those three things too. Writing feeds my soul. The interviews are absolutely incredible. They're also on my website. And so it makes me a a more well-balanced person. Um, Other people can, you know, focus on one thing for me, telling stories and interviewing people and being a whole brain practitioner that makes up all of me right now. I love going into companies. I love looking like, I love looking like whole brain Barbie. My sister calls me whole brain Barbie. Um, I love being a writer girl. I love traveling and writing about it. I think that um, I'm, I'm, I'm creating, like you say, your best life. I'm creating a creative life that feeds my soul. And I hope that I can inspire other people to follow their dreams too, to defy gravity, to do whatever it takes to do whatever you want to do. And I, and I think that I'm, I'm, I'm in the process now of integrating everything together. And you actually, Colleen had sent me a list of questions before this interview. And I took the time to write the answers, which I am going to turn into some kind of blog. And it helped me, it helped solidify that I really and truly love the three things that I'm doing. And you know what? I could add a fourth thing, you know, if something else great comes Mm -hmm. up, um, I could add it, but I I really do feel really good um, and, and happy that I'm able to have the time. I have the gift of time. And I'm grateful for that every day. And I'm grateful that I can be creative. Um, that is very important to me. So you're able to go into corporations locally there in St. Louis, Missouri, and you're able to do just a kind of a free lunch where they're able to learn a little bit more about what this whole brain theories are, understanding more about it, how it can benefit their uh, employees. So I think if you're in the St. Louis area, for sure, reach out to Pam. Um, You can connect with her on Facebook. Uh, You can connect with her at WilsonMentoringWriting.com and have her in. I mean, there's it's complimentary for you to learn how this can assist you uh, with your employees. And let's just say right now is a huge time of change for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, oh, we're trying to get back to normal. There is no normalcy left. Everything's gone. So what does it look like to whole brain think? Right. I think that's very important for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for um, for them to understand what that would look like and the capacity that that could bring uh, to their employees, right, into their corporation. But I okay. wanted to also ask you about StoryCorp's interviews because many people don't know what those are, and sure. I brushed over that quickly. Will you explain what StoryCorp's interviews are and and Absolutely. where do we find those? And also, I just want to say um, I am live in St. Louis. Um, I will travel to a company for oh, whole nice. thinking, and I can do it on Zoom. Not the best, but it can be the lunch and learn can be delivered on Zoom. OK, so StoryCorps, um, it, it's not new. It's been around for a long time. Many the way they they're nonprofit and their mission is to create a climate and community of listeners and listening. Mm. And what they did in the very beginning, they put these booths in cities. They look like the old Superman telephone booth. Yeah. And you would go in like with your grandma and you would say, grandma, could you tell me what it was like to grow up in the 1920s here in St. Louis? And so there are professionals who do story core interviews. You'll hear them on NPR all the time. What they decided to do to have more stories brought in, and it's a national archive. So whenever I actually facilitate an interview on an app on the phone, you can also do it on your computer. Mm-hmm. It gets uploaded into their national archive. So there, I, in fact, I was just in St. Louis City and I found a story core trailer. So I believe they're putting the trailers back oh. in the communities. So what I do is um, I interview somebody. Um, for example, um, I'm who, oh, I interviewed, um, I can't remember who I've interviewed. I've interviewed so many different people at this point. Um, I'm actually going to talk to um, someone next week um, because we were both diagnosed with osteoporosis very young. So we are going to talk about what that diagnosis meant to us and how it's changed our life and what we're doing about it. So then and I will I will put all the information in. It gets uploaded into their national archive. So, for example, um, last uh, fall, I interviewed the playgroup moms. I've been a, a member of a playgroup now for 27 years and we have stayed together. And we these are all on my website under StoryCorps interviews. We actually did an interview about our history. There were five of us and it was one of the fun, one of the funniest, most fun interviews we have. Yeah. Because everyone had a different story. Everyone had a different perspective. Of course. And it gave me such grief about it. So I, I uploaded into the National Archives. You could go to storycourt.org um, and you could type in 
Pam Wilson, St. Louis, Playgroup, um, osteoporosis. Um, I just did one on uh, siblings who met each other late in life. And it's a national archive. It's collecting this the stories of being human. Mm. When a professionals do it, they can edit. When I do it on the app, I can't edit it. And so um, you hear a lot of um raw and, and real. Hear, it's it is the actual human experience. You hear doors opening, you hear drums in the background. Um, but they the interviews are so interesting. They're about 12 to 15 minutes. And literally, you sit with me. We, and mm-hmm. we're like having yeah. a conversation and my phone is on and you're talking to me. And a- every time we do it, people will say, well, that was easy. Like that was <laughs> fun. And everyone has this incredible story. And it's all so now, you know, in a million years, when they find the story core archives, yeah. we'll have we'll have a testament. We will have a story about what human life was like on yeah. Earth in in this year. So it is so it's much exciting. fun to be. It's so much fun to interview people. It's even more fun to listen to people's stories and to Mm. see them come into the story that they didn't even know maybe they had. And the interviews always go somewhere. I have no idea. So I have to be so on my toes, which is a great skill. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So you can find all of that at WilsonMentoringWriting.com. And then you can connect with Pam on Facebook at Wilson Writing, um, as well as just look up Pam Wilson. You can find her. Uh, She's got red hair. (laughs) <laughs> well, today it it's red? a little red. It, it is. What red. is happening? <laughs> I think it's red. I think she has red hair. She's denial. It's usually still. brown. <laughs> yeah. But I think she has red hair. It's like kind of a brown auburnish kind of, kind of color. Red. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, she's she's written so much and has helped so many people discover that their love of writing as well. Right. So I think what you've done is just so important. And I I, I really want to thank you for being uh, a guest today on the podcast, for being a member of the Leap community, for being a huge supporter. You really do elevate and empower so many women. You give to them just unconditionally uh, throughout the community. And I think that is the secret to getting back out of the community. What you need is to be open to give um, and serve. So thank you for thank that. Thank you for having me today. And I would just like to say that I would not be where I am without the LEAP community and without you. And you know that. I think I will always be part of the LEAP community. It has it has helped me so much meet other women. And seriously, Colleen, just hearing your voice once a week it really does. It really does help. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. So I just want to remind all of you, you know, you're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that's ever going to be right, Pam. Like that's right. you're either going to design your life the way you want it and you're going to, you know, maybe start being a writer or, you know, you're in a company and and you're thinking, you know, I'm a manager of all these employees and I could really use this lunch and learn for whole brain thinking. What is whole brain thinking? Right. I want to learn more about that. And how is that going to benefit my employees? Right. Right now, I have to tell you, you've got to focus on your employees because there's not loyal employees out there anymore. You really need to give them what they need. Give them the tools, give them the skill sets, give them what they need to be happy and healthy and to be able to produce what they need to produce for them for their job you know, for what their job description is. We need to provide employees with the tools. And back in my day, those weren't always available, right? And we just worked our fingers to the bone and you were expected to burn a candle at both ends and no one's doing that anymore. Sorry, no one's doing that anymore. So what are you providing them? And uh, go check out all of her blogs at Wilson Mentoring Writing. Com. And again, Pam, thank you so much for being with us today. It was an absolute pleasure. I love you to death. And uh, thank you for all that you've done for me and the community. And until next time, listeners, thank you again for being loyal. Be you and be strong. Bye-bye for now. Thank you for joining us on this journey of self-discovery, where you learned the tools to create a life by design. Remember, you are the only you there is, and you are the only you that will ever be. Be you and be strong, because you are brilliant and the world needs you at your best. We cannot wait for you to join us again next time.